Hi, my name is Robert Su. I'm a medical oncologist affiliated with the University of Southern California Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center. I wanted to introduce our paper titled Molecular Characterization of Keta Kyushu Cancer Testes Antigen in Expressing Carcinomas, in which we studied a cancer testes antigen called KKLC1, also known as CT83, which has been noted to be expressed in multiple solid tumors, most notably lung, gastric, and breast cancer. As there are multiple new clinical trials out there looking at adoptive cell therapy targeting this cancer testes antigen, we wanted to see which non-small cell lung cancer patients in a clinical trial might be the best fit for this. Working with Keras Life Sciences, we looked at 9,790 non-small cell tumors that underwent whole crit transcriptome sequencing. We split these tumors into quartiles based on KKLC1 expression and investigated pathological and molecular differences. We saw that adenocarcinoma had significantly higher KKLC1 expression than squamous cell carcinoma. We saw that tumors with the highest quartile of KKLC1 expression had a greater proportion of tumors with higher tumor mutational burden, greater than 10. 44% in the highest quartile of KKLC1 expression compared to 28% in the lowest quartile of KKLC1 expression. We did not see any differences in the percentage of pdl one positive expression across all four quartiles. We saw that increased KKLC1 expression was associated with increased M1 macrophage abundance. We saw that higher levels of KKLC1 expression were seen in pan wild-type and KRAS mutated tumors and associated with high tumor mutational burden. From this, we showed that many of the tumors that had high KKLC1 expression were those without actual mutations except for KRAS G12C. And interestingly, we did not see a difference in pd one positivity across all four quartiles of KKLC1 expression. These findings make us believe that adoptive cell therapy targeting this cancer testes antigen should be considered as therapy. I wanted to take on this research as I found this to be an opportunity to collaborate with some of the leading thought leaders in thoracic oncology, along with the researchers at, at University of Southern California, who have been looking at preclinical studies for possible T-cell receptor therapy. What I found most notable in our work was that the tumors that had high KKLC1 expression were primarily those without actual mutations, except for those with KRAS G12C. And interestingly, at the same time, not seeing a difference in pd one positivity across all four quartiles. Um, this work needs to be evaluated at protein expression level, but it really may pave the way to how we evaluate patients more suitable to adoptive cell therapy in non-small cell lung cancer in the future. I also really enjoyed getting a chance to present these findings with members of the Keras Precision Oncology Alliance team who are some of the leading thought leaders in the field. Since publication of this manuscript, we have worked with pathology at University of Southern California to create a panel including KKLC1 that can be validated at a protein expression level. We had a small sample size of 23 patients with known KKLC1 protein expression and analyzed the seven-plex multi-immunofluorescent panel looking at protein expression of different immune infiltrates in these patients. We showed a significantly increased density of CD8 T cells in tumor cells compared to stromal cells in tumors with the highest gene expression of KKLC1. We also saw an increased cell density of regulatory T cells and tumor cells in tumors with the highest gene expression of KKLC1. These findings were suggestive of increased immune infiltrates in tumor cells and in tumor cells relative to stromal cells, and that strategies to deplete regulatory T cells and to further amplify CD8 T cells should be pursued in the development of T cell receptor therapy targeting KKLC1 in the future. In the meantime, we have continued to collaborate with the Basic Science Lab at University of Southern California to help with development of a drug targeting KKLC1. I'd like to thank all the authors in the study in helping with this collaboration, in particular Dr. Nieva for his mentorship and guidance with creation of this manuscript. I'd also like to thank Keras Life Sciences for their work in providing us with this notable data and support. My experience publishing with OncoTarget was a very positive experience. I appreciate a time in which they were able to find the reviewers to consider our manuscript and clear communication with us and letting us know about the status of our journal. I felt that the process working with the processing team to help create the proofs was very prompt and straightforward. I was impressed with how quickly the proofs were made and how professional the paper looked once produced.